and we are rolling time for another episode of Cash's Top 5. Joining me today, a comedy brother, a writer for Bob and Tom. He's got a couple albums out. Uh, All-around content uh, renaissance, man. He's got a lot of different interests. I'm glad to have him on the show. Dwight Simmons, what's up, buddy? What's going on, Cash? How you doing, brother? I'm doing good, man. Uh, I say it, you know, I've said it too often uh, on these uh, episodes because each one I like, kind of try to treat as a, a, a whole new thing. This one really was, I think, the toughest one to do so far. I mean, they've all been fun in their own way, <laughs> but the one you picked, uh, I think it's the t- literally the toughest one so far. What are we doing? Uh, we are doing One Hit Wonders, and I feel you on that. And I was uh, going through just uh, my mind memory and trying to think of One Hit Wonders that resonated with me, and there's at least 50. Like, yeah, you asked me to do five, and I was like, <laughs> this mental exercise is going to put me down, and I can't do this. Uh, so I'm glad we expanded it. I'm glad we expanded it because I would have been curled up in the fetal position if you made me narrow <laughs> this down to five. Well, and that makes this a historic episode, by the way, because there has been, it's been nothing but top fives. This is the very first one we're doing a Cash's Top 10 with Dwight Hell Simmons. Hell yeah, let's go. Making history. Black History Month. It is on, baby. That's right. I'll try That's to get this out in February. I won't hold yeah. on to March with this one. <laughs> you run out of days in February. They don't give you the full. It's they short. don't give you the it full. <laughs> Yeah, man, because I was I did I wrote down just like you said from memory. I was like, oh, this one for sure, this one. And I was like, well, I, I should Google one hit wonders to make sure I don't miss anything that kind of slipped out. And now I'm like, I legitimately could do a top five per decade. There are oh, that geez. many great one hit wonders. Yeah, yeah. It's uh it's inspiring, but it's also sad. It's like, damn, that was a banger, and we never that dude's driving an Uber now. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, well, let's get it started. It's going to be a little longer than uh, a normal episode, which I love. It's going to be a good conversation. Let's kick it off. Dwight, what's your 10th favorite one hit wonder of all time? My 10th favorite one hit wonder of all time is Boom, There It Is by the tag team. Okay. They're- I was wondering if this was going to make an appearance. I was surprised it's this early, to be honest. Okay. Yeah. This is number 10 for me. It's back in prominence. Uh, you know, it's a hype song, you know, uh, Womp, there it is. I, I don't know if, you know, I was amped up on coffee when I put this list together, but I was like, this has to be in my top 10 out of the 50 that I compiled. Mm -hmm. Like there's a commercial about it now. I think this came out in the Mm nineties. It may have been, uh, on the Space Jam soundtrack, if I'm not mistaken. There was also a, a spinoff, wasn't uh, Quack, There It Is, Mighty Ducks 2? <laughs> so it, it was in the Change my answer. I'm changing my answer to Quack, <laughs> no. There It Is. Yeah, oh, yeah. Get rid of the original, get Quack, There It Is. There it I is. Think this is one that's, I think, multi-generational, because I've seen 80-year-old grandmas at weddings get up and dance to Womp, There It Is. Like, everybody oh my- knows that song. Yeah, and there's no specific band. You just, it's like uh, <laughs> moving, yeah, like a Charlie Brown character. You just do it. exactly. <laughs> this is a fire off a black mosh pit for no reason. <laughs> I like uh, this. This song starts. We're talking about one hit wonders, but this song starts. Tag team back again. It's like we don't know who you are. <laughs> you were here. What are you talking about? Back again. <laughs> That reminds me, one of Metallica's very first songs off of Kill 'Em All, their first album, uh, is "We'll Never Stop, We'll Never Quit" because we're Metallica, and it's like we don't know who Metallica is. Like, yeah, I guess we'll take your word for it that you're going to be sticking around the next forty years, which they did. Oh. But in '81, nobody's like, "Yeah, who, who you are?" Yeah, we don't. Know. It's like when rappers are like, "You already know who it is." It's like, I actually a hundred really don't do not do not <laughs> have no idea. Well. <laughs> My number 10 for you, won't the quack, there it is, a great start. <laughs> My number 10 for you has, and we're, I think we're right around the same age, so we'll probably have a lot of nostalgia picks oh, yeah. uh, mixed in. My number 10 reminds me of cargo shorts and puka shells and 
flipped oh. collars and three stripe Adidas shoes. It is pure mid 2000s. It's Yellow Cards Ocean Avenue. Yellow Cards Ocean Avenue. This is this is some. Uh, Where did you grow up? <laughs> did you grow up by a beach? I was no, just I, like, I wish I was by a beach. It wasn't. I wasn't by a beach. I was here in Indianapolis, but that song was so hot as soon as everybody got their license at 16, 17 years old, that song was everywhere. <laughs> so that song was our anthem for freedom. At oh the time. my God. We were both 16 and it felt so right. Like that just angry <laughs> pop punk of 2005. Like, You're like this, they get me, they get me. It puts <laughs> me in a place of there were no responsibilities. You know, you got the whole world ahead of you. Your life is, a, yeah. you know, uh, and it, I, it holds up because every once in a while I'll find a pop punk playlist on YouTube just when I'm doing some writing or if I'm working, I'll have that on in the background. Right. That one, that one comes on. It gets you fired up. Do I'm those, 16 again, baby. Do they still get those emotions flowing for you? Or are you just like yeah. angsty for no reason? I'm not angsty, but I remember like just car rides or like bonfires yeah. after football games on Friday night or going over to a girl's house, stuff like that. I mean, it's yeah. just pure nostalgia. I love it. That's the one. Oh, That's man. That's the one. That's and it's amazing. number 10. I, That's how good this list is. <laughs> and it brought back the childhood. Um, I think I have one that you may not know. Okay. But we'll see. Uh, number nine for me is The Rain by Orn Deuce Jones. Okay. This is, do you know this? No. I know. <laughs> Hell I, yeah. I, I'm familiar with No Rain. Which I thought might make okay. an appearance, but the rain, the rain, is, was it a it, hit? Am I just out of it? It was a hit. It was his only hit. Uh, they actually spoofed this on SNL not too long ago. But this is a song from like the '80s. Like he's in a full zoot suit, and the whole premise of the song is he's uh, he follows his girlfriend uh, out the door, uh, and then sees her with another guy. And it just starts raining. <laughs> <laughs> the whole song is, I saw you and him walking in the rain. <laughs> and it's so angry. And he's like, I saw you at the coffee shop <laughs> with his ass. And then the last two minutes, no shit, is just him talking about how he takes his revenge uh, on this woman he's like i cut up your credit cards girl all those <laughs> it's very 80s uh angry black man it's like yeah and then i took those first suits and i returned them <laughs> and then i threw <laughs> all your purses and your jewelry in the street so it's like the path not taken for the first two minutes of hitch where instead of being sad <laughs> he gets revenge uh he, by cutting up credit get, cards and stalking he gets revenge by uh, <laughs> he pretty much stalks this lady the entire <laughs> entire time. Well, the, uh, yeah, this is a uh, this is a nostalgic pick for me too because I always thought it was so funny. I was like a child, and I was like, "This yeah. dude is freaking crazy." I got that's the met. first time I heard uh, you just a squirrel trying to get a nut. <laughs> that's from that song. Yeah. See, I know that yeah. line, but I don't you know think that I line? know this. Yeah, but I don't think I know the yeah. song. I didn't I'm not think sure I'd be walking away with homework from this, but I guess I do. I gotta Man, I'm this. sending you that video. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's from that song or he lifted it, but he's like, this is my world. You just a squirrel trying to get a nut. <laughs> so I cut up all your fur coat. <laughs> uh, I love that our first couple of picks could not have been more different. That makes me so oh. happy. <laughs> oh God! Hey, I'm telling you, I have some uh, wild cards in here. Yeah, this is this is a deeply personal list. <laughs> that well, that's a deep cut. Um, my, my number nine for you is also fairly a, a deep cut. I would imagine. I don't know that it was. It's it hasn't been mainstream because I don't know that it's been used in anything since then. But we'll we'll see. But my number nine for you is Matthew Wilder, "Break My Stride." Matthew Wilde. I don't know this one, I don't think. Ain't nothing gonna break, break my stride. Ain't nothing gonna hold ah, me down. Yeah. Oh, no. yeah. Yeah. If you would have just said what Diddy sampled for the first time, <laughs> I would have got it right away. <laughs> well, yeah, that original song. 
Oh, uh, that's awesome. Okay. It's just got the little the, 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 the yeah. synthesizer at the beginning, and it's just it's a happy tune. And you're yeah. just that was gonna break my stride, that was gonna hold me down. Oh no. Got to keep on moving. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, what? that's it. I thought he sent I thought they sampled like another early hip hop song, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe everyone just sampled that song. Oh, it, I mean, it's there's been so many samples over the years. I'm sure it's been used somewhere. Yeah, uh, at least once. Are you a, are you of like when a song you like or liked as a kid gets sampled when you're adult? Do you do you turn into like the curmudgeon old dude that's like, I didn't no. ruin it. No, no, because I, I honestly think maybe this is the you know optimist which I am not, but uh, so there may be a little bit of optimism that maybe kids will, that's their gateway to, to learning older music, you know? Yeah. Uh, you know, which I don't know that that ever stops. You know, I grew up listening to like my mom had music, my uncles had music, like old school stuff that I would listen to and I'd, right. I'd eventually find. So if it's found through, like if there's a TikTok video and there's some old ass song on there and that's how they get, that's the gateway to finding all this great older music that I'm all for. Yeah, uh, I dig it. To get mad is just, yeah. I mean, you gotta be really curmudgeon. You'd be like, I don't mess with my, it's fine. Yeah, man. I don't, it's okay. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, it's fine. It's not for you. It's not, it's okay. That's a great, you know what? I've been using that line a lot, not, not exactly that line for a while now, but like the world's not set up for you. Like, no, yeah, exactly. I don't know who told you that, but it's <laughs> not everything is for you. <laughs> and just so, just let people enjoy things. Just, it's okay. oh, it's so hard for people sometimes. I know. Uh, <laughs> okay, I love it. What do you have? Yeah, now I learned something. Look at us teaching each other one another. Uh, teaching us. Uh, I got number eight. Uh, Throw some D's by Rich Boy. <laughs> okay, yeah. <Throw> some <laughs> you know D's that one? On, yeah, throw some D's on. <laughs> throw some D's on that. That's, uh, that's high school coming out there. That is, um, yeah, I think I'm a little, I don't know. Was that in high school? I must have just been graduating, but um, as someone who had no uh, experience with selling crack or buying 22s it was just such a cool fucking thing this skinny ass kid he's just like throw some d's on that bitch um and then my white friends would ask me what that meant and so yeah. i did i did the research for all of them <laughs> i was like i don't fucking know why you ask me these questions i'll get on ask jeeves and find out for us yeah exactly what is d's you know, that's uh, one of a long line of songs where I sang along and knew every word and had no idea what they were talking about. Oh, man. That was the era of that. That was the era of that. Uh, everybody had a rim song, and mm -hmm. I feel like he was the only one that didn't make it. But I would put his riding in a Cadillac on rims as the best one in that era. And uh, no longer Rich Boy, unfortunately. He, uh, <laughs> Working at No target. other hit. <laughs> working at Target, boy. <laughs> working at McDonald's, but throw some cheese on that. <laughs> oh, he'd make so much money with that remix. He he really would, man. You know, how, you know how sometimes McDonald's will come out with commercials that are specifically targeted to a certain demographic. Like, oh yeah, we don't it's, necessarily want these people. We know who's coming to our store in this exactly. Season. Those like why is on that burger? <laughs> <laughs> like why are they rapping over chicken nuggets? This is <laughs> pandering. Know. You're pandering. McDonald's. Pandering. <laughs> uh, oh, well, yeah. my number eight for you. We're gonna kind of stay somewhat in that lane. Uh, and I this may be questionable if if it was a hit, but by my estimation, it was. Uh, my number eight for you is. Afro man, because I got high. Yeah, nice. Ba -da 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 -da. And you just don't. Very well the done. The verses just keep coming. The verses just keep coming. Yeah. And uh, that's one of those. Again, you're hanging around a, a garage or a bonfire or with your buddies. Everybody's kind of having some drinks, and that comes on, and you just. Oh, I remember every single word. I'm gonna sing it loud, along as loud as I can. Right. Yeah. That's that's one where. You know, there's an actual 
story happening in the song without there being like a convoluted story. He's really just saying a bunch of random things um, that kind of coincide with one another over this real, um, yeah, like you said, like a campfire beat. Like he could probably do this on his guitar, but it's got a nice bass line. And I, I dig it. Mm-hmm. Afro man, because I got high. <laughs> that, was, uh, that was so funny to us when we were in, uh, when we, when that first came out. Yeah. I, I mean, it. it was such a novelty when it came out. You're like, Oh my God, this is, it's funny. But then you realize, I don't know if maybe people realized it right away. It took me years later when I heard it later on, I was like, Oh no, this is actually a really catchy song. Like this is an earworm for sure. It's not just funny. It's not just like shock right. value. No, this is <laughs> da, da, da. right. Like, it's good. It's really yeah. Good. That's the mark of a great one hit wonder. Like I could probably play it today after not hearing it for several years. Mm -hmm. Like sing along to all the words. Yeah. These uh, songs are all burned onto a playlist somewhere in an 01 (laughs) Malibu. People are still (laughs) bumping this down the road. Uh, We have there it is or quack. There it is. We've got the rain. We've got some, throw some D's. What do we have at number seven? Number seven, all right. So we went uh, hype, we went sad, we went hood, and now we're going to go to the bedroom for Bed by Jay Holiday. Oh, wow, Remember dude. Bed by Jay Holiday on the album Back of My Lap. <laughs> I've played this song <laughs> on repeat fucking for like four years. This is a this is probably the originator the originating song on my baby making music list when I was in college. Yeah, I call that list DBTF Down by the Fire. Down by the Fire. Yeah. <laughs> Why do all your songs gotta be by a fire, man? <laughs> Every memory you got. <laughs> it can be fire, it was the ultimate yeah. gathering, and then like can everybody kind of goes and pairs off and sometimes it's nice. just you and you and the lady they're kind of left over snuggled by the fire just yeah the, the ultimate mood man oh man and if you play a bed by jay holiday you know it's a rat <laughs> <laughs> man i yeah, haven't the, heard that song in years he's got that that's silky voice cut. yeah that's that's super deep that's i don't think you find that on any list but uh no that's really specific <laughs> But the baby making one. It was on like, do you ever watch like, uh, it wasn't, it was after TRL, it was like 106 in part, like on uh, BET, like the music video countdown. I remember that song being on there for like four weeks straight. <laughs> like, yeah, this guy's going to be huge. I remember thinking, because I remember not knowing what 106 in part was. You know, I grew up with VH1 pop-up video and, and oh, yeah. like you said TRL. Yeah. It's like, here's a, just a slightly different version of what you're used to. And you yeah. get this, that's how you got introduced to all this new stuff. I don't know how people discover new stuff, maybe through TikTok or, or Instagram yeah. or what, but uh, yeah, today yeah, you're right. Different. That's, that's how you got all, all the new music in what you learned was hot or was on yeah. the shows. Yeah. It was, uh, that was one that, you know, cleaning the house and you just belt out. <laughs> it comes on the radio. <laughs> yeah. Well, I had Ocean Avenue, Break My Stride, Afro Man Because I Got High. Number seven for you is probably, if we made a top five 90s prom songs, this is easily in the top five. Oh, man. Uh, Edwin McCain, I'll Be. I'll Be. And I'll be your crying shoulder. Oh I'll yeah. I'll be yeah. <laughs> Dude. Was that a uh was that a theme song for a show or did they just use it in a bunch of commercials? I'll be I don't know. Well it might have been. I I can't oh. recall if it was or not off the top of my head, but um I was at the Rathskeller downtown indie a couple years back for something and he happened to be performing that night oh my and god we ended up we ended up pissing at the urinals right next to each other in the bathroom and i was like <laughs> edward mccain i'll be look at this like oh cool. just being by rarefied air 
Yeah, like you get like when they walk in the room, you can just tell it feels different. There's just right. that that vibe. Uh, right. And I, but, and I was like, he's gonna perform for an hour and a half. What's he gonna like? Is he gonna play yeah. I'll be ten times? Like I, you know, no offense to him. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm sure he's got a great catalog, but I haven't heard it. Yeah, um, but you're like, I don't want to hear anything else. Yeah. <laughs> I can't for like, this that's an amazing oh. one. Uh, oh. That's uh, again TRL. That's in the yeah. late '90s uh, set where just a strength like tub thumping Chumbawamba. I don't want to name yep. too many in case they come up later on, but um, yeah, they're just a long line of one hit wonders in that generation. But that one, I always thought was just so good. Then the saxophone comes on three. Yeah, you get the through, like, oh man, <laughs> this is quality. He's like, I dig this. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Dwight, what do you got at number six? Um, I have Hit 'em Up Style by Blue Cantrail. Wow, that's on the now we call music number one. I'm the pretty one, sure. the I'm original. Sure. Yes, hey ladies. Oh my, that is a banger today. <laughs> I love that. She's not Blue, even talking to me. <laughs> Blue, Blue Cantrail before her time. Oh, yeah. Because oh, yeah. think of all the, the, the Lizzo, the Megan Thee Stallion, Beyonce. Right. Think of where female empowerment and alpha, right. alpha female is now. Yeah, hit him up, hit him up style was. Oh just my god, the most attitude ever. It was. It's it's so beautiful, uh, and it's a damn shame she couldn't didn't pop it up with anything. <laughs> we, we want that energy. Yeah. Uh, it's. <laughs> It's like, did he catch you? What happened? Uh, it's just so, <laughs> such a powerful song. I love it. It's a banger. I have it on a couple of my playlists that I keep in rotation today. Uh, hey, so good. good. Trail. Yep. Oh, it's such a good pick. Uh, it's, still a, uh, it's still a party starter, too. Hey, oh, lady. Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those when it, when it comes on, you turn it, like everybody kind of yells, Woo! like, you know, it's a house yeah. party. Yeah, I, I know this song, and then everybody just starts yeah, yelling. Yeah, it's the, <laughs> the most rhythmic way to say "fuck wild" I've ever heard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my number six for you is uh, a little more, fe- some more female empowerment. Uh, a little bit of a throwback for you. It's Amy Stewart, "Knock on Wood." Knock on, <sighs> knock on wood. I'm trying to find the lyrics. This is like disco, 70s. You better knock, oh. knock on wood. <laughs> oh, yeah. Baby. <laughs> do, 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 do. You better knock, knock, knock on wood. Yeah, Is dude. this also a threat? Is this song a threat? You better knock on wood. I don't kill you. Yeah. <laughs> you better have luck. You better rub your rabbit's foot. You better knock on wood, boy. Yeah. I love it. <sighs> I love a good revenge song played over a disco beat. <laughs> I was looking through those older decades of, of, of one hit wonders. And there's a lot of like surfer rock from the fifties and yeah, mamas and the Papa wannabes in the sixties. And, you know, there's a couple good ones here or there, but the seventies was where it really started. Right. Uh, with the one and Amy's Amy with two eyes, A M I I. So, you know, she's crazy. Oh my God. Uh, Better not on wood. <laughs> Amy with two eyes. Yeah, dude. She's legit. I don't know what happened with her career or what. Yeah. I, I assume she's a one hit wonder because I don't know that she's ever had anything beyond that. But yeah, my mom had this pure disco CD that she kept in the car. And it had like Funky Town Lips Incorporated on it. Hell and yeah. Disco hits. Yeah. And I just remember the drums on that one do so good. Oh, I love it. My dad was a uh, DJ in his former life. So he always had records uh like hundreds of records and like we weren't allowed to touch them because records were very valuable at the time of course just like i mean when he would play you know everything from earth when fire did he, like one hit wonders that i had no idea who they were uh yeah that's awesome that's awesome we get a lot of that from our parents i think i think so too yeah at least the appreciation for it yeah that's um, dope. Uh, <laughs> I guess I'll go a complete 180 from uh, empowerment. Maybe not. Uh, number five. Is that where we are, right? Yep. 
Yeah, so we've kind of completed the first top five, and we're going to okay. keep it going to do the actual do. top five. <laughs> I love it. All right, so number five is I'm Too Sexy by Wright <laughs> Sid Fred. Uh, now, what is it about this one in particular that ranks so highly for you? One, this is my nostalgia pick. <laughs> if I hadn't had them already. I, I remember most of these have been nostalgia picks so far, but that's cool. Oh, hard. yeah. I mean, <laughs> I'm just going to keep saying it. This next one's my nostalgia pick. This one's from uh, my childhood. Yeah. <laughs> I remember every morning one year when I was, uh, my dad would drive me to school and the song would come on the radio and I would just have it in my head for the rest of the day. I'm too sexy for my shirt. So sexy. And I was like, I've never heard anything like this. And I fell in love with it. I found like my dad had a cassette tape that just had side A, right there, Fred, I'm too sexy. And side B was the extended version of my cassette player. <laughs> I would just, after one song, flip the cassette. <laughs> I need more of this. I need, this is the, all I need. <laughs> and it's such an awful song. Uh, but I'm not changing it if it comes on. I'm, I'm probably going to listen to the entire thing. Uh, he's too sexy. He's so sexy, it hurts. Uh, and it's, as an adult, you're like, this is clearly making fun of model culture, right? This is like meta. You hope that it's done in irony, and then you find yeah. out it's kind of not, probably. It's, it's just a guy it's, who's got <laughs> kind of an inferiority complex about himself, and so he just... <laughs> <laughs> he has to build himself up any way possible. Yeah, yeah, and then a uh, record label label said the green light. <laughs> Not then only over the radio, the original cut. We're gonna have an extended version. <laughs> extended version. <laughs> <laughs> you want to hear about him being sexy in a grocery store, maybe, or uh, <laughs> at Disneyland? <laughs> Let's workshop more ideas. Keep going. No bad ideas, guys. Uh, my number five for you is I thought might rank a little higher because it was one of the first uh -huh. ones I wrote down uh, when I was making this list, but it got bumped down a little bit. My number five for you is Eddie Grant, Electric Avenue. Yeah. It, it on, saw, yeah. yeah, man. It, it, it saw a bit of a revival in 08 with Pineapple Express. It had yep. been in obscurity for a while, and I think that resurrected the, the popularity, but that's one that no matter what, Puts a smile on your face, puts you in a good mood. We're gonna rock on to Lake Avenue. Yeah, man. It's just I dig so that. good. You know, you sitting by the fire. <laughs> <laughs> that one would not be a DBTF song. That, that, came from, that came from my uncle Phil. He was the originator of the DBTF uh, CD, the the playlist, yeah. and he had it very well uh, curated. And I don't know oh. that that one would have made it on. To, in fact, it may have made it as like a funny one. Like it's been all this like right. boys to men, Tony Braxton, like real slow. <laughs> yeah. And then and you just pops on for one to kind of liven it up. And then you go right back to the Luther or whatever. Like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That would be, that would probably make the list, but yeah, just a fun song. That's great. That's great. Yeah. I dig that. It's upbeat, which I love. Yeah. I don't, do you do you have that on playlist today? Absolutely. Yeah, I, yeah. I still I still burn CDs from my car. That's how. That is. We need to have a podcast about that. <laughs> what you just said out loud. <laughs> I well for the longest time I didn't have a car that had an aux. Like yeah. I drove an 01 Malibu, which I mentioned yeah. earlier. I drove that up until maybe just a couple of years ago. And so I yeah. didn't have MP3 player or an iPod or iPhone hookup or anything like that. So it was either the radio, which I listened to quite a bit, obviously for work, but I had right. to, I still made mix CDs because I just I love I enjoy making playlists. Yeah. And so I got this new car. I've got a 2015 Honda Accord. I'm so old guy. I couldn't figure out how to <laughs> pair the Bluetooth of my phone to the car. Like it just, I, I, it, would, it would make calls, but it, I couldn't get volume. Oh my to, God. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to oh. keep making CDs. Oh, I don't just... care. I don't care. I'm good at it. I can do it. I yeah. can make CDs. Yeah. 
the tray opens up. I put the blank yeah. disc in. It does it, it. It spits it back out. I've got a playlist. Yeah. So it sounds like an airplane is about to take off. <laughs> and then when that stops, I know the CD's done. <laughs> yeah, dude. I've got my oh, Sharpie yeah. ready to go and let it read yeah. maybe something. Got to label it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So to answer your question, yes, Electric Avenue was probably on a mix three or four mixes ago. 100%. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love it. I love it. How many yeah, songs can you? How many songs can you fit on a, on a burn CD? It's a, it, well. There's a science, and then there's the art, Dwight. Okay. okay. The, the science is you get eighty megabytes a, or forty number. megabytes, depending on what memory you're working with. So it's all by file size. So if I can go yeah. in and make the MP3 sizes, the file sizes smaller, I can fit more songs on a disc. Usually, I can get around twenty to twenty-two songs. Okay. On a on a burn right. mix CD. That does sound easier than downloading Spotify, but you know, <laughs> sometimes you wonder why somebody like you is engaged and somebody like me is still single. And other times it's just kind of <laughs> obvious. Uh, it just kind of makes sense why there, nobody settles down with this. Oh my God. My fiance would love it if I burned her a CD. <laughs> are, you, are you kidding me? It's like sending somebody a card in the mail. Like, Oh my God, you just made my whole year. It's easy. only got four songs on it because I'm out of practice. I didn't. It's, I didn't. It's all I didn't, I'm too sexy. Yeah, that was the extended version on there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that know? was for you, baby. That's for you. <laughs> all right, man. Uh, what do you got at I number got four? Number four, um, a testament to how many incredible one-hit wonders there are that we haven't overlapped yet. But uh, number four is. This is how we do it by Montel Jordan. This is how we do it. That. Another yeah. timeless. Every single wedding. Oh my to, god. You go to a club. Yeah. No matter what they're playing, that can be worked into the playlist any yep. time of night. Yep. The, any situation. Then he said you they can play on the DMV and you wouldn't even be mad that you have the DMV anymore. <laughs> like, this is how we do it. This yeah. I love it's still, you know, it's obviously one of the most overplayed songs in the history of music. But still, like, you're not mad at it. You know why? Because all the gangbangers forgot about the drive-by, Adam. <laughs> you know how good a song has to be for all the gangbangers? All of them forgot about it. It's true. Uh, you know, between <laughs> one, there it is, this is how we do it. Your wedding playlist must be, like, you You just it's, need to keep it shuffle and cha <laughs> and you're done. And I'm good. <laughs> No, that's really strong. I, I really, that's a good point. I can't believe we haven't overlapped at all yet. Uh, I hope, I hope yeah. we didn't just jinx that, by the way. We're gonna, uh, we'll we're, see. We're, we're gonna have the same number one. Uh, my number four for you is, I don't care. I want you to make fun of me for it because every yeah. time I see a meme that's like songs that get white people turned, this is like yeah. on the top. Oh. I don't care. I still love it. It gets me hype. Sometimes you go to a concert. It's the song they play on the house music to keep the crowd warm before the headliner comes out. Yeah. Mountains of Wayne, Stacy's mom has got it going. Oh my on god! Before, Dude, baby. Yeah, get after it, sir. Yes. It's undeniable. No shame. It's undeniable. Stacy's mom has got it going on. Yeah, it's a, yeah. That uh, that brings back some hardcore caramel vibes for me. Uh, <laughs> heard that shit all the time yeah. <laughs> this is uh i love that pick i love that pick it's uh i don't i'm not mad at white people getting hype i'm just mad when they don't do it the right way you know what i mean that's fair i i can't argue sort of, with that sort of like what white people said about colin kaepernick <laughs> he's not doing it the, do it right, it the right way, way. <laughs> It hyped I the want, right way. I want yeah. Colin Kaepernick to just listen to Fountains of Wayne and be happy about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, we want Stacy's mom, not storm the Capitol. Yes. <laughs> this is all we're asking for. <laughs> uh, Stacy's mom was that in uh, American Pie? It had to have been. It, yeah. There's yeah. There's no way it was like maybe the uh, the wedding one. Yeah. The American wedding, like the third one, I'm sure, yeah. or the American reunion. Because it came out after the first couple, but there's no way it did make it into one of those. Right, right. Uh, what a National Lampoon type movies. That's 
that's good stuff right there. Yeah. I uh, probably go back and watch the video after we're done. I'm trying to remember because they kind of all <laughs> run in together on me. Like there's the getting like that Blink 182 vibe where or, there's a band out. and there's low. Oh yeah, like Fallout. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sugar, we're going down swinging. Like they all have. <laughs> like they plug their nose to say, like. Yeah, exactly. Oh my God, Ocean <laughs> Avenue. <laughs> All the small things. Exactly. <laughs> Somebody get one of these bands a nasa next. Uh, <laughs> get them a sponsorship. On the get them a sponsor. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. I All love right, that. Man. We are. And since I love that, <laughs> we're approaching the top three for both of us now. We still haven't had any crossover. It's amazing. Whoop! There it is. The rain. Throw some D's. Bed. Hit them up style. I'm too sexy. This is how we do it. What is your number three, Dwight Simmons, top one hit wonders of all time? Number three is a tale of love that ultimately ends in heartbreak uh, in just the most adorable way, also catchy. It is Just a Friend by Biz Marquis. Oh, man. The okay. man himself. Just you want to talk about cell? samples. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I guess, like, yeah, there's a Mario, who's probably also a one-hit wonder at some point. Yeah. <laughs> Sample just a <laughs> From one-hit wonder to one-hit wonder, here's the same beat. Um, yeah, I love this song. Uh, you can get a whole room of people yelling, Oh, baby, you! <laughs> Got what I need. That was uh, one of those. Has this ever happened to you where you're kind of excited for a commercial to come on because there's something about it you just love? Right. There was yeah. a Heineken commercial from like 10 years ago where there's an old, old cabbie in the front with party people in the back. And that song oh. comes on. They're just, you got what I need. And they're just vibing <laughs> together. And I was like, I normally hate commercials, but I love this one. This is great. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. This one's okay. Okay, this one is okay. Yeah, I love this one. Uh, just another one that's, you know, uh, you can probably know all the words. It ends with uh, him, you know, hoarding this lady, <laughs> which he which he calls blah, blah, blah in the song. <laughs> it doesn't matter uh, what her name is. It doesn't matter what her name is. And then he uh, walks in on her dorm room. He's tongue kissing another dude in the mouth. And then he's like, don't ever trust a woman that says she had a friend. Uh, <laughs> and I'm just now realizing that two of my picks are about cheating women. <laughs> so that's, maybe that's that's on me. Let's get, well, no, we, we next episode we'll get you on the couch. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll talk, talk about this. Talk about, we'll just kind of, <laughs> we'll open up we'll, what makes up a Dwight Simmons. That's what, I mean, yeah, that's why I resonate with hit em up style. Like I, people need my to list know is, what's coming my to My list is complete. <laughs> <laughs> my list tells a story. I'm the one that's too sexy. I'm going to take this bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> well, staying along that same vein, my number three for you is probably the most attitude I've got on my top 10. And going how, seeing how your list is shaking out, it might be the only one that may cross over. And yeah. That, Bone Crusher Never Scared. Oh, my God. Yeah. I almost had this one on here. It's this one's so like, hype. This just almost, this just missed the cut for me. Just missed it. I have it like number 12. Such a good it's, pick. Well, it's, again, nostalgia is connected in some way yeah. or another to all our picks, but Friday Night Lights, man. You know, oh, yeah. We – the Warren Central State winning football team all four years I was there, 03, 04, 05, 06. And yeah, this song would come out and it was, this was the song, like they're coming running through the tunnel and yeah, the best feeling in the world. You're with your best friends. It's a little yeah. chilly, but your shirt's off. You got paint all over you. And <laughs> I never scared. Oh, I just, that so is good. the, that's the best way to, use that song in high school because the lyrics are, you know, he's outside of the club yeah. and they think he's a punk, <laughs> which is just not, <laughs> you can't let that go unpunished. Oh, I'm, I ain't ever scared. 
uh, this is uh this was in the era of like hype Lord John DMX and here comes Bone Crusher in the video he's like 50 feet tall and he's like crushing the highway like he's King Kong or something I love it so much well I was thinking about that I was like I was so lucky to be in school when I was you know because again not everybody loves high school football or, or doing the school activities thing but I always enjoyed being out with my friends and checking out whatever whatever was going on and yeah you know to have those songs like we ready yeah like I know what are, how what do you kids get hyped to today like I feel sorry for these people or before yeah how, today, yeah how do you get hyped to Billie Eilish I'm the bad guy yeah or Post Malone <laughs> oh, sunflower oh, some, 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 some flower. I'm like what are you talking about uh, man do I want to hit somebody I want to I want to cry for a second yeah or <laughs> how did be high school football in the 80s I'll stop the world and meld with you. That you don't want yeah, to hit exactly. somebody after that. But yeah. Be ready. Uh, yes. Oh man, come on. A hundred percent of football. Stuff. I did get in trouble with like not switching up my playlist between like football and basketball because you don't want to be shooting a free throw with Bone Crusher going off in your head. <laughs> That's true. It's just uh, like, oh, I'm angry. <laughs> I am mad. For basketball, you want mims. Like, this yeah, is why. Yeah. This is why. This is like that. Oh, you can yeah. kind of get a good dribble going. Yeah, it's good. You got some rhythm. Or soldier you boy. Rhythm. There you go. Now you're talking. Okay. Top I love two. It. We're getting towards the end. What do you got? Top two. Number Top two. two. This, uh, this should surprise nobody, given my uh, previous pick. Uh, but number two is the master of booty himself, Sir Mix a Lot. Okay. <laughs> with Baby Got Back. It is tried and true and undeniable. Uh, you can't even call it a nostalgia pick. I guess it would be nostalgia for everybody. But. It's transcendent. It's, again, yeah. it's like, won't there it is. I mean, it is yeah. everybody gets up and dances and sings along to that song. I mean, it's huge. Yeah. I'm surprised it's, it's not your number one, to be honest. I thought I, as we yeah. were going through your top 10, I'm like, oh, that's going to be number one. I know. Yeah. It. yeah. Now I have yeah. no idea. Oh, I love it. it. I love uh, it. Because, yeah. I mean, you thought, how do you, you thought it was going to be, oh, my God, Becky. <laughs> <laughs> you say that and somebody else got you. Uh, on this, I remember being on the school bus. Yeah, fellas, yeah, fellas, yeah, <laughs> ladies, yeah, like, yeah, it's good. It's, like he's it's actually, a unifying song. It brings it people is. together, and he's actually rapping, and he gives you three good verses of like actually rapping. It's like it's not the mumble rap that you hear a lot, or it's not just like sing songy. He's actually flowing a little bit. Like this yeah. dude might have a career in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> I th well, and he flows good enough, but he also flows enough so that you can keep up with him. Right. Like, right. I didn't know some of the lyrics until way later in life. I was just singing along to gibberish. Yeah. Like, Triple X throw down. I didn't realize what that was. <laughs> I didn't know what that was, but I knew that it was great uh, to sing along with. And you know, I realized, oh, that's what he's talking about. I think this was the first video I watched as a kid. I was like, I don't think I'm supposed to be saying this. Like, he's just, he's standing on a mountain of ass. You're seven years old, like, like oh, oh my God. <laughs> uh, man, that's, I'm so excited to hear what your number one is. Cause now I have no idea. I really thought that was going to be your number one. Oh, it was my close. Number, my number two for you couldn't be more different. Uh, from what a lot of what we've talked about so far, um, the flat but, ass anthem, <laughs> yeah. A lot of flat asses love this next song. Uh, it's got to be if we did top five soundtrack songs of all time, this has got to be up there for making a lot of movies really good, uh, because it's such a mood setter. Norman Greenbaum, Spirit in the Sky. Ah, I love it. It's in so many movies so many and, so many you know, movies forrest gump remember the titans yeah. anytime they want to set that mood yeah. of right you know uh again like vietnam war era like in forrest gump yeah. or if it's just something like 
it's it's lifting the mood. Like maybe there was a kind of a dark scene, and now they're it's bright outside, and they're gonna lift this the spirit in the sky, man. Yeah. Such a good song. Yeah, I love it. I uh, that's another one that's on my playlist. That's one that I always liked, but didn't listen to the lyrics until recently, so didn't get like the full impact of it. Oh, yeah. um, but man, I hope he's getting or his family's getting royalties like like every week because you it's know, so you I can't remember oh I wish I could remember what the article was but I saw an article online that it was essentially he never had to work again because of that oh, one song he's that's beautiful. just in this palatial estate he has all this stuff now I don't know what <laughs> else he ended up doing if he was a writer or a producer or, or right. what but yeah man that one song Damn. and it's used in all those soundtracks he got Hey. Damn, my man. I love that. See, that's yeah. a great story because you don't know what happens to a lot of these people we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, like, I feel bad if there's a couple. Well, I feel bad if there's a couple that are actually, no, we had two or three hits. What are you talking about? It's like, yeah, oh, <laughs> did, did you? Sorry. Like, I was going to pick, well, I'm not going to say what was I was going to pick because I don't want to spoil your, your number one. Uh, yeah. We got Womp, There It Is, The Rain, Throw Some D's, Bed. Hit him up style. I'm too sexy, which is hilarious given all the other hip hop you've had on your list. <laughs> this is how we do it. Just a friend. Baby got back. Dwight Simmons, what's your number one favorite one hit wonder of all time? All right. So you had the rain. You had hit him up style. You had uh, uh, bed. You had I'm too sexy. And now I'm giving you the legend of one hit wonders, the man himself, Mark Morrison, return of the Mac, <laughs> the most fantastic one hit wonder of all time. Okay. Uh, yes. I fucking love this song so much. Uh, it's the ultimate redemption story. Of, you know, he tells you, you lied to me and now he's back. <laughs> can't keep a Mac down. <laughs> I saw you walking in the rain, girl. <laughs> Put the Mac as return it. Uh, yeah, this is uh, just another one that is, you know, evergreen. I feel like even teenagers, without knowing it, know this song yep. uh, consistently played. Uh, I love the vibe of it. <laughs> He's mad but it's an upbeat song for some reason and yeah. uh i guess he won because he made the song and we never heard from him again <laughs> <laughs> he made his he made his coin and he dipped i mean sometimes you want to yeah. do that they're yeah the fame <laughs> the, the pressure you know yeah. you don't want all that it's too much are By you way, a uh, are you a fan of return of the mac oh yeah i am and yeah. actually had i been thinking about it i probably would have guessed that if yeah, it wasn't gonna be Sir Mix a lot. That makes a lot of sense. It was gonna be, yeah. uh, be because through your list, <laughs> I just pictured '90s Dwight as an oh, yeah. adult with the Steve Harvey the, eye cut, <laughs> the suit with the big tie, just jamming with up all these '90s fourteen hits. buttons. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just, got the little hat, the little yeah. hat cocked with the little feather. Oh yeah, that was at the that's peak return of the Mac. Absolutely. <laughs> Uh, man, that's such a fun yeah. list. I, <laughs> I've i got some honorable mentions for you. Uh, nice. But my number one for you, again, I'll recap my top 10 so far. Ocean Avenue, Break My Stride, Because I Got High, I'll Be, Knock on Wood, Electric Avenue, Stacy's Mom, Never Scared, Spirit in the Sky. <laughs> it's a weird list, uh, but it's fun. <laughs> They're all bangers. It is fun. <laughs> it's 100% bops. My number one for you, I hope, is not problematic because now I'm thinking it might be. Uh, oh, this is this the best. Might, then. This might get us canceled. Uh, Ram Jam, Black Betty. Oh, Black Betty. Bam, 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 whoa, Black Betty. Black Betty had a child. Whoa, like you unstoppable. Can't get, you can't get canceled for saying you like a song. <laughs> you didn't write the lyric. No, I know, but we're praising what I don't know what Black Betty is. I don't know what kind of reference thought, that might be, but. I thought it was like a car or something, but it could also be let's go like his. It could also be his housekeeper. I don't know. Yeah, I don't so know. <laughs> let's just 
Disney gloss over that and just say that we that's your number one. <laughs> <laughs> it all led to that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but that's one song. Ooh. The only fault I have with it is I wish it had one more verse. I think it's just a little too short before the breakdown. Yeah. But no matter when Man. or where that comes on, I turn it up to 11 and jam out yeah. every time. Is that a band or a person? It's a you, band. They're called Ram yeah. Jam. Ram Jam. Because they Jam. get after it from jump. Clearly. They're yeah. like, yeah, like that's some, when I see people up doing this shit, like mm. clapping and stomping their feet, that's what I picture. Yeah, <laughs> that's that. Uh, yep. Just mullets at a county fair and, just <laughs> and a marble <laughs> hanging out of the mouth. But there's something about that song I've always just absolutely loved. Oh, it's, uh, as you said, an absolute banger. It's undeniable. What uh, What didn't quite make your list? Oh, man. Um, let's see. I'll just go through these real quick. Um, <laughs> remember uh, The Dip by Freak Nasty? I was looking for that because I was oh like, my is God. that a hit wonder or not? Because I love that song. Yeah. I, did, I didn't see it listening anywhere, so I was like, did they have a second hit I don't know about? Nope, couldn't find anything uh, from that. Would, that would complete your wedding playlist. Is it? <laughs> I'll put my... I. This is funny given my list now, but I listened to it and I was like, this is repetitive as hell. <laughs> <laughs> and his name's, uh, uh, let's see, Bad Touch by the Bloodhound Gang. Oh, wow. Yeah. Did they have anything else? I thought they had something else, but I couldn't find it. But I, that's maybe, why that Maybe didn't. underground, but like, yeah. maybe, they, I feel like they had a cult following from the jump. Yeah. Uh, oh, you asked for ones that I hate it too. I'll say those later again. Uh, play that oh. funky music, White Boy. Ooh, Cherry. Yeah. Yeah. Love that one. And then Ring My Bell. I need a ward. If I need a ward. And Man, uh, well, that would have been perfect with my Amy Stewart knock on wood. Yeah. They were on the same CD. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cash is great as it. And then it's going down by Young Jack. It's going down. Meet me yeah. in the mall. It's going down. Meet me in mm. the trap. It's going down. Man, mm. that was on mm. the vibe 0304 list with Lil John and, and Bone Crusher. Yeah. They're just naming places <laughs> and telling you what's <laughs> happening there. <laughs> there was a steady stream of like, was it Young Jock, Young, Young Dro, Young, Young Bro. Jeezy? There were quite a yeah. few in a row that had bangers. Yep. Yeah, they all were young or little. Yeah, well, the, the, the little for sure. Yeah, little bow wow. <laughs> they're like all at the same time for some reason. Like none of us want to be little anymore. <laughs> which one? Which ones did you hate? Uh, I hate Informer by Snow. Informer. I don't know the words. The uh, Jim Carrey. <laughs> the Jim Carrey. Uh, Parody on In Living Color is one of my favorites for that. Uh, and then I've never liked Ice Ice Baby by Vanilla Ice. That's fair. But, I liked it because he uh, he was on uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, 2, Secret of the Ooze. That's right. Yeah. So that's how I was introduced to him. And so I liked him when I was eight. So, yeah. But Man. There, was no, there was no staying power. Like I would never put that <laughs> on a list. Uh, it did not last for me, for sure. The, uh, yeah, the yeah, uh, oh, that's an unpopular opinion. People, people are very defensive about the line. I get that. It's polarizing. More power to them. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're the same people that enjoyed "Good Vibrations" by Marky Mark. And the Funky <laughs> <laughs> like, why are um, you all dancing in a warehouse? <laughs> makes no sense. Um, I had a couple. Honorable mentions for you. Blind Melon, No Rain. No Rain. Oh, that's uh, what you mentioned earlier. Yeah. When I said that, the rain. Yeah. Yeah. That was one that uh, I, there, you, there wouldn't have been a college playlist in the 90s or early 2000s that didn't have that song on it. I mean, it's yeah. just universal. Like, that's a college song. When you're 18 to 22, you're listening to that song. Yeah. 
Uh, what about uh, another rain? Do you remember Candy Rain? So for real. No. It's like heavy D in the voice. Yeah. That was uh, <laughs> that was far down the list. That's deep. That's, <laughs> That's probably deep, the deepest deep. cut you've had so far. That is. <laughs> uh, Tainted Love, Soft Cell. Oh, yeah. Uh, yep. Pretty good. Uh, it lost some points, though. The Marilyn Manson cover. Uh, I yeah. I did not enjoy. Uh, putting on the Ritz by Taco. Oh my God, Adam. <laughs> we got to talk. No man, it's good. Hey, it didn't make the top ten. I'm just saying I, it was one that I've enjoyed in the past. It's okay. Uh, I go back and listen to it. I'm yeah, gonna go it, back and listen. Yeah. Well, you're gonna well no because then you'll be like, dude, really, what's wrong with you? Because that's not <laughs> a good song. Uh, one headlight by the Wallflowers. I don't know if I know that one. It's from the 90s. It's Bob Dylan's son, Jacob Dylan. Uh, okay. Uh, I can't even. One headlight. I can't remember how else to do it. I'm not musically inclined. <laughs> Neither are these people. That's why. Uh, yeah. I can't even think of a line to, to give you that kind of makes it stand out. But if you, I guarantee you, if you listen to it, you would remember it. I'm writing these down. I'm not kidding. I seriously had like, I had a, you're the best by uh, Joe Bean Esposito, the Karate Kid thing song. <laughs> Around. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, I got a question for you, because I, w- yeah. I didn't put this down, but maybe I should have. Chameleon there. Did he have a hit besides Raiden? See, he... Uh, it's contentious, because okay. I'm a Chameleon Air fan, so Me I too. have some of his albums, so I don't know... He definitely didn't have anything as big as Raiden. I didn't think so, because I wanted to put that, but I was like, man, I love yeah. Indus- Industry Groupie is one of my all-time oh, favorite songs ever. Yeah. And, and I was like, well, I'm not going to put Raiden if it's not even my favorite Chameleon or song, and that yeah. was his hit. <laughs> that's, yeah. I, uh, it, but still. Oh, well, same. Like, that's not my favorite Chameleon or song either. Like, I think I like three or four songs off that album even better than that one. But, yeah, that definitely, I think... Weird Al's version was bigger than his. <laughs> so I don't know what constitutes the hit. That's actually a really good point. I think that deducts points from that song because yeah, White you can. was definitely White. bigger. Yeah. <laughs> like by twice. Just saying something. Well, Dwight, thanks for taking the time to do this one. This was obviously a, a longer one than usual. We did our top 10. Uh, I know you, you stay active in comedy. You know you, you have a Patreon that people can subscribe to. Tell us what you're up to. Where can people find you? All that good stuff. Yeah, man. Thanks, Adam. I appreciate that, man. Uh, yeah, my Patreon's what I'm focusing on right now until I start touring again. Uh, it's just patreon.com slash Dwight Simmons. And then you can follow me on social media, uh, Dwight Simmons on Instagram, uh, Unwell Spoken on Twitter, and then on my Facebook page. But yeah, so hopefully I'll be able to do five dates again. Uh, Fingers crossed. Maybe in- Maybe in 2030, who knows? But, <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's that's what I'm up to. Right on, man. Well, thank you again very much. We'll obviously have you on uh, again, probably for just a top five, <laughs> unless you, <laughs> unless you pick another super hard one again. Uh, but we'll definitely have you on. We'll talk to you again soon, bud. Right on. Appreciate you.